Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and various Final Fantasy fans in between. I am your host, Blue Highwind, here to bring you the Final Fantasy Wikis podcast, now coming three months later versus our usual six months. We actually have Final Fantasy news for the first time in a while, and we want to talk about it with you. Joining us tonight are... Um, me, Skathus. I had an intro, but I've decided to leave it blank purposely. <laughs> uh, this is uh, some Callum H who I think is the only person in this call who knows the true news of this week, which is that uh, Kingdom Hearts Union Cross has announced that it is terminating service. Oh, I, I actually this did is, not hear that. <laughs> this is Techno Obliterator who came up with the original plan for what we were going to discuss, and already I forgot something, so thank you very much, SCM, for fixing it. Okay, but now we Wait, have... you actually meant to put that on the list? I thought we just didn't care. <laughs> well, I mean, all right, well, we're just going to mention it. It ended. R.I.P. No, it, it's not ended. It's ending, right? It's going to end in June. Uh, yeah, like the story ends in April, and then they're taking it offline in May. So... And then... And also, Dark Road is still going to be around, but they're just going to put the entire story up in September. But there's like a million hanging threads, and the story seems nowhere near finished. What are they going to do? Oh, they just... Oh, in the Japanese client, they just got to the end of the Wreck-It Ralph world, so they're actually at the ending now. Yeah, but there's the first game with unfinished plot lines. That's never happened before. It's the first time. <laughs> yeah, but who is Braid? And, you know, did uh, Ventus actually kill uh, Strelitzia? And um, there, there's Darkness. Who's Darkness? Maleficent, I guess, returned to her own time. All right, we're, we're way off track already, but... Um, uh, so, you'll find, out in, the, you'll find out in the Tetra sequel coming out only for Google Stadia. Okay. This December. <laughs> from, my, from my understanding with how the closure is going to work, is basically they're taking the game offline and they're not um, releasing any new online content, but it, you'll still be able to access the story in an offline single player experience. And speaking of single player multiplayer games, tune into the very end of the single player <laughs> mobile games. Tune into the very end because we have more to say on that. All right. So okay. there's two things I've screwed up. Okay, well, well now please, please move along. Okay, yes, there there appears to be a major replacement that Square Enix has planned to replace Union Cross, which is very exciting. But first, we need to talk about something even more exciting, which is Final Fantasy Tactics Two. It finally happened <laughs> with Project. To be clear, it's, yeah, it's Project Triangle Strategy and. Of all the announcements at the recent Nintendo thing, I am the most excited for this one, by far. Who here has played I, the I demo? Do. There's a demo uh, out. I've, There's a demo. Yes, I've played the, I've played the demo. It's all right. The voice acting is horrendous. It's very bad yeah, voice acting. Well. It is. Uh, uh, yeah. And like I do call. And like early on, they did call it sluggish sometimes, but it actually like it feels like controlling things by the D-pad is too slow while using the left stick is somehow too fast. I... Except on the world map, which runs like absolute trash. I did not have um, any uh, issues with the game's performance, but it also is a turn-based strategy game, so it could run like garbage and what does it really matter? Yeah. Well, the other thing to remember is that they haven't even gotten a proper title for this yet. And to my knowledge, they don't have a release date either. 2022. So, well, aside like, from next year. 2022, yes. right. So the fact that it's a year out, like, it's really, it's fairly early on in development. Suggests to me, I'm a little forgiving of the demo being not that great. Because what I'm excited about is that this seems to capture pretty much everything people liked about the original Tactics games. It uses the Octopath art style, which I thought was perfect for Tactics. I would love it for a Final Fantasy VI remake, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. This is actually also, uh, made by the Octopath Traveler team. This yes, is the second. Made by those. Is the second game in the HD 2D series, which apparently is a thing that Square Enix is doing. 
yes, it's made by those people. And the, so the major departure, well, I guess departure from the tactics games is that there are branching storylines in this one. Well, it's like uh, Tactics Ogre. Uh, tactics where, tactics yeah. Ogre, yeah. Yes. Okay. It, this is a uh, fairly beefy demo. I played it for three hours on Thursday night. And uh, even in that demo, you had a major decision as to whether or not you sell a prince out to the evil Archduke or if you keep him around and fight the evil Archduke. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the gameplay is solid, and I do really like how they're doing the branching path. It's not a matter of you saying, oh, we'll do this or we'll do that. If you pick the option that is unpopular amongst your party, you actually have to convince them that this is a better course of action. And, like, in the demo, that option, uh, the uh, the preferred opinion is to uh, is to surrender surrender the prince to the to the bad guys so like you have to go around the area uh, find out about uh, these these special uh, weapons uh, in the town that you can use to put to your advantage in the battle and you have to tell them about tell the rest of your party about them to convince them to vote in favor of keeping him okay Yes, um, there are two battles in this demo, and I would say for a game that's a year out and has a codename title, there is a lot of content that they showed off. Um, mm -hmm. They clearly I they mean, know what they, game they want to be making, which is encouraging. We say codename title, but Octopath Traveler's codename was Project Octopath Traveler. Yeah, Square Enix does this a lot. There was um, from june the playstation show they had that uh whatever team luminous studios doing project uh Aphia. yeah project not final fantasy 16 so we don't give a shit anymore and before that before that they had project uh setsuna which just became i am setsuna and uh does babylon's fall was that originally project something or another or was that just always babylon's fall and they didn't tell us what that game even was Nah, never mind. I think they just didn't tell us, but uh, who remembers anything about that game? It's just completely disappeared. Uh, oh, yeah. and triangle Strategy yep. coming soon. They, <laughs> at least they could have called it Triangle Tactics. That's what I want to call it. I want to call it Triangle Tactics. Triangle Strategy makes me think of Triangle Diplomacy, and now I hate it. I don't want any of that... I am tilde tilde dash triangle all caps strategy lowercase in the bottom of the box exclamation okay. point and uh i guess i should also mention that the triangle refers to the game's philosophical view of the world which is that you have to pick between equality freedom and utility which is interesting i i'm curious how this is going to end up but it also feels like a twitter argument right it happened so uh no. we have we have a lot to cover so let's move on Final to Fantasy the... Tactics. Yes. As brought to you by John Stuart Mills. <laughs> Finally. Uh, do not pick the utility route. That's the Ayn Rand route. Very bad. <laughs> We're not letting any of that happen. Uh, so anyway, the other big major release from Square Enix this week, which is in some way related to Final Fantasy, is Bravely Default 2, a game I have not played. Uh, has anyone played that? I don't have my copy yet. Uh... Hexa did uh, put in the chat once uh, we mentioned that we were going to be talking about Bravely Default 2 that uh, the game is still really not optimized at all for the Switch. Which is interesting because that game only released on the Switch. I don't think it released on any yeah. other platform. Uh, so, so this is a point that also applies a little bit to uh, Triangle Strategy as well. But like, typically what game development does is the last few months or so are all about optimizing performance and getting rid of bugs and whatever they don't really add any new content like a few weeks before something goes gold or ships so um it's that suggests to me that they didn't have enough time to polish this up yet uh they have definitely said that the development had covid issues but like i mean the the final yeah. demo uh i wouldn't say it runs great but it didn't run terribly either and anyway this is a game that's effectively that is effectively using a variant of uh, 
of the Final Fantasy X turn-based system, so it's not like it needs to perform well either. Yeah, yeah I, I'm that's... noticing that this is a recurring problem with Switch releases. That That's not a very old system, but it feels like it is already on its last legs. Just like nothing seems to release in a very good state. Uh, well, I guess the thing is, the Switch uh, wasn't really the contemporary of the PS4 and the uh, Xbox One. It was the contemporary of the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X. So now that we're in the generation of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, uh, the Switch is starting... Names is? What? <laughs> Sorry, go on. Sorry? Uh, the Switch is starting to feel even further behind than it already was. Right. It's, I can't yeah, tell Xbox you the X. last... The last Switch game I played that felt any good was uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which is a game that's 10 years old. Hmm. Yeah, like, and, but also, like Song Color Mage mentioned, um, there are, like, developers will have to work under coronavirus conditions right now, which um, causes a few understandable issues when you're not in the same office as people. So, I'm forgiving of it. The only thing I'm concerned about, or well, I wouldn't say it's concerned, the only thing I'm interested in is, is it a good follow up to the first game? Because the first game was a pretty good spiritual successor to Final Fantasy V, except it's way too hard halfway through the game. It was way too hard like, a quarter I, of the way through the I, game. I, yeah, I just I just feel like once the difficulty ramps up, it just ramps up way too steeply. And that's the only issue I had with it. I loved it before that. You all remember uh, me dealing with the summoner boss in that game? I was so goddamn angry. Yeah. I was uh, so yeah, angry uh, I could not get through that thing. Ugh. Obviously, none of us here have the experience to definitively answer that question, but as I've heard, this one is a bit easier. Okay. All right, that's good. My problem well, is uh, Bravely Second was really, really boring, and I, I I might be done with this series. I was very excited I for Bravely ready. Default 1, but Bravely Second is just a slog. Well, we'll see you in a few months when a few of us have actually played it. Yeah, I All guess. I Bravely Default 2 is the third game in the series. A classic Square Enix experience. Yep. Bravely Second has been erased from history, as it probably should be. It was erased from our memory. Okay. Um, I guess... Now, the Final Fantasy actual news. Yes. Uh, yeah, the actual topic of this podcast. <laughs> capital F, capital F, Final Fantasy, real ass shit. We are now moving away from the world of the Switch and onto a world called... The PlayStation 5, a console that exists in myth and legend, because as far as I know, it is impossible to buy even now, about four months into I its life. I am the only person on this podcast who has a PlayStation 5. I've been trying. I have one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, never mind. There are two people that have a, a PS5. Okay, I guess I'm just really unlucky then. All right, I'm the only one here who's vaccinated. How about that? I, I win that way. Well, yes, you do, uh, correct. Yes. But you don't know I that mean, the PlayStation 5 actually comes with a vaccine in it. So, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, that's, that's why it's so hard to find. Damn it. I mean, of the course. PlayStation 5, uh, the PlayStation 5 pre-orders opened pretty much immediately after that uh, that showcase, which uh, in Australia was like in 9 in the morning. So, uh, uh, yeah. That's about it. Well, lucky you guys. Uh, so, um, Final Fantasy VII... A video game that came out in 1997 also came out in the year 2020. Weird. Um, it is now being ported to the PlayStation 5 with a new version called Final Fantasy Remake Intergrade. Which I guess is yes. them uh, so, setting up their engine to prepare for Final Fantasy 7 2. Part 2. Yes, so I think the first thing, before I talk about the specific upgrades that it comes with, the first thing I want to talk about is the name Integrate and what it means. Because if you look into the uh, the etymology of that, it has a number of different meanings. And one of the meanings is like the Integrate being like between the time which a caterpillar turns into a butterfly. Well, it's between stages, right? That's... Right. It's summer school. It's Final Fantasy VII Summer School. Releasing right, in so, June. Can, can... So what that suggests to me is that this specific title and um, the chapter that's coming soon 
is just the step from remake to whatever the next project is in this series. It's a step from the first one to the next one. Yes. And okay, so I can come back to that later when we get to the stuff about the Yuffie chapter. But the PS5 upgrades it includes photo mode. Very happy about. It includes classic, no- but on normal difficulty, which is pretty interesting. Uh, and then it also includes a, t- a ton of like performance improvements. So like the textures no longer look like garbage. Um, they, they said they improved textures, but I'm not going to believe uh, believe them until they show us a comparison of that one door. I'm, yes, the doors. I'm fine with like, the textures. I would just like the textures to load in speed so that you're not running around a town that's unloaded half the time. That was Final Fantasy VII's right, problem. Well, right, well, that's the, that's the thing, because if you look into the game data for Final Fantasy VII Remake, there are some pretty high-quality textures in there. It's just none of them load. It's like the PS4 was straight up just holding that game back. Yeah, that was the impression I got with that one. It was definitely like... I never wanted a PlayStation 5 until I played Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm like, oh man, this console... This is this is it for this console. We gotta move beyond this. Um, I, I, think for, I think for a few of the worst textures, they actually may have also configured the thing wrong. And okay. it's kind of weird that they never went back and fixed that, but sounds like they just went immediately into the ps5 version after after getting uh the uh original release out the door so Mm. Uh, we should also mention uh final fantasy 7 on playstation 5 will be a free upgrade if you own final fantasy 7 on playstation 4 and somehow own a playstation 5 if you're that lucky Um, and also uh also they won't let you upgrade if instead of buying it, you uh, get next month's uh, uh, free version of it on PlayStation Plus. That one is PS4 only. Yeah, that's... that one, it doesn't count if you get it for free on PS Plus. Okay, that's that's a bit odd. But also, but... But also like, if you get the digital version of the PS5 and uh, your game is a disc for Final Fantasy VII Remake, then that doesn't count either. You have well, to that's... either... Well, Wait. that's standard because uh, if you have a physical version of the game, that the disc itself is effectively your license. So right. if you buy a PS5 all digital, you can't verify uh, physical versions of PS4 games. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay, yeah, I own sense. I own the digital version of Final Fantasy VII Remake because when that game came out, there was a thing called the coronavirus. And we were all in Ooh. lockdown, so I actually could not go to a store to buy a physical copy. I bought it off of PSN. Right. So when the time comes that I own a PlayStation 5 and this magical, you know, golden future of socialism and betterness to come someday, I'm sure Joe Biden will bring it, um, I can just go He's and launch the same download and be fine. What's up, Skate? Yeah, a that's PS5 right. for every citizen. Yes. A PS5 in every pot and uh, a chocobo in every garage. There you go. Your answer is yes. You will be able to just download the digital version just fine. Okay. Uh, uh, if you want the extra Yuffie chapter, it's ten dollars. Is it ten dollars? It's only that's 10. what I'm wow, I was expecting. <laughs> oh, it's ten. Okay, because yeah, I heard that the Japanese price uh, comes out to uh, twenty US. So. Okay, so it might I read be that it's ten dollars. I, I might be wrong. I read that too, but then I I noticed it was a rumor. Um, okay. I think it might actually I, be twenty. I I don't think there's been an official price said yet. I'm willing to come out here and apologize if I've got that wrong. Okay, you owe everyone listening ten dollars, so that's gonna All be. Right, but, that'll come but out to about two thousand dollars, considering how many people. But basically, listen. the thing the thing here is that. They're not doing a Persona 5 Royal. They're not making us rebuy the whole game. Yes. Good. Uh, no Final Fantasy 7 Final Mix. Yeah, and they're not doing that on us either. Yeah. Or international, anything like that. that that's how things all would happen changes, back in the PlayStation 2 era. Bad times. Yeah, so of the improvements, I think the one I'm most excited for is photo mode. Because, like... Like, most games these days have photo mode. Like, Mario has it. And you just see, like, people share some really cool stuff with it. Like, and 
given how good like the stills are of like some of the characters using their abilities in battle given how cool some of the stills are already and that's without photo mode like i can't wait to see what people do once they've got their hands on that and trust me like um you guys are going to see some pretty cool images uploaded to the wiki not by me but by someone who's really good at taking images <laughs> I I'm just a bit disappointed that it's you know just a photo a photo mode where you pause the game and whatever's happening you can take a photo of that and not like the uh, photo mode of uh, Kingdom Hearts Three Remind which allowed some truly cursed bullshit if you knew what you <laughs> yeah. were doing yeah so like it's similar to what it's yeah. similar to what you know what image I'm thinking like, of too right is this you know exactly which image I'm thinking of, right? Yeah. There's a scene the in The nominee Spider-Man with yeah. all of Organization 13 standing around her on the couch. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a scene in Spider-Man PS4 where, like, um, where Mary Jane's supposed to be held hostage or something. And then if you use photo mode, you can, you can take, look, uh, have one of her like smiling and taking a selfie of the, the whole situation. <laughs> And it looks so stupid. <laughs> There's but like, but in the... they're not doing that. But photo mode does include things like different filters on it, etc. So it's not a, and um you can like you can move the camera around, etc. This is all oh, this is way, all standard for, at this point for a major you know AAA yeah. release. They all have this. By kind the of way, stuff. by the way, for the few people out there. Tifa is wearing shorts underneath the dress, so you're not having upscot photos. I'm sorry <laughs> you... to disappoint the perverts watching this podcast. Wait, how do you know you that? Can't do that? How do you because, know that? <laughs> because I've ripped the models and I've been uploading. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had to check. The models of the game. We found this out. You just I'm had to check. I'm sorry to disappoint you all, but you can't see anything there. Or you, you had to check. It's very important. <laughs> this is, look, look, this is information the world a, needs a to know. Serious, a serious contingent of the fan base ever since uh, pretty much every release of Final Fantasy VIII after the original uh, had to modify scan so that you couldn't upskirt selfie. Um, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and, you know, Final Fantasy XII, you actually can check, and Ash is wearing uh a short under there. I was uh, uh, I was seventeen at the time. That's my defense, and I I am super more mature now, right? That's a, but yeah, yes, that, that is that is different. probably the fastest Square has ever learned a lesson ever. So yes. yeah, I I'm sorry, viewers at home. You have four gentlemen on a podcast. Eventually, it happens. We try we try <laughs> not to be this way, but eventually, it just kind of creeps through. I, I apologize for everyone. <laughs> Well, well, in all the people who are disappointed about this, we can talk about our next topic, Weiss. Hmm. Oh, oh, have we moved on? No, we're, we're not ready for Weiss yet. We haven't talked about Chapter Yuffie yet. Just, yeah. We're and not like, ready. if we're talking yeah. about about horny stuff, Weiss clearly has a shirt on in, the, in this so, trailer. So. so one one last one last improvement from Integrate that uh, we haven't mentioned yet. Is that there's a diff- there's like graphics mode and performance mode now. Where performance mode is if you don't have an HD or 4K TV, and it lets you get 60 frames per second. And graphics mode for is if you just really want 4K. So and that's yeah. just this is just fairly standard stuff. The only yeah. really like novel improvement to this, that's like kind of unique to this game, is that you can play. Uh, in classic, in, with classic combat, the more turn-based ish system, you can play that in normal difficulty now, which some people will be excited about because I know there are some fans of classic mode out there. So that's a, that's a cool improvement that a lot of people ask for. They haven't included material loadouts, which a lot of other people asked for. But oh, wait. yeah, I think that just about sums up the improvements aside from the Yuffie chapter. Oh, was that my complaint that the game doesn't have that option that Final Fantasy VIII does, where you can just kind of switch your GFs over and not have to re-customize every single time in that one dungeon? Yeah, yeah. So they didn't include that. They didn't I, include. Like, I wasn't expecting material. that. Um. Anyway, in the future games, but we need to talk about. The one thing out. We need to talk about the Moogle in the room. 
and that that's Yuffie. Yes. So uh, this yes. is the first truly new content, I would say, like extraordinarily new content for this game, uh, other than fighting Sephiroth, I guess. Yeah, that's also there. Right. Uh, this is the story of Yuffie before she joins the party outside of Fort Condor. Uh, turns out she yes. was chilling in Midgar, dressed as a Moogle, working for the Wu Tai government, and hanging with some new playable character called Sonin. Personally, I don't think she's part of the Wu Tai government. I think she's lying about that. Um, yeah, I guess she could be lying. I didn't even think of that. I just assume. I just, I we're... Just, yeah, I just think it's entirely within her character to just BS that reason when her whole reason for being there is just I kind of want to steal the material. Yeah, so uh, Sonin is the first completely new playable character, right? Playable. Uh, sort of half playable, because uh, we've already he heard in interviews uh, that while uh, you will be giving Sonon commands, you know, the A to B menu and whatever, uh, you don't directly control him. You're playing it, you are directly playing as your feet the entire time. Wait, how can that so possibly work? Well, well, the same, the same way your other party members, uh, members worked uh, in the uh, in the main game. They're, they yeah, still attack him. Yeah, but whatever, they're just slow as shit. Yeah, but half the enemies right. in Final Fantasy VII the remake knock you down, and you can't do anything for like thirty seconds. It forces you to kind of rotate your characters that way. What What am I doing when Yuffie gets you know when she eats shit and she's on the ground? Do I just I just have to wait for the AI to yeah, I don't know. That's oh, gonna be weird. Off. It's like the game is built specifically that you play as all three characters. That's very I don't know. I, I mean, obviously so, Yuffie's gonna play radically different from the characters we played as already. Yes, yeah, now? So that's a good segue into the first thing I wanted to talk about. So I really like how Yuffie's gameplay looks because I had no idea how it was going to look before I saw this. So it looks to me, if you look on the commands she's got, her triangle command is throw. And most of her attacks are melee attacks. So it looks to me like the way she plays is that you're basically in melee mode most of the time, but then you can charge up a throw so you can throw the shuriken at the enemies. So in other words, they've turned her into a mostly melee character with a ranged attack as well. So I think that's pretty cool. And the, the thing I'm most excited for is those synthesized commands. That thing is totally new. And it's another thing they've, and this time they kind of took that one from the after years, I think it was. But the synthesized commands look super cool. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, so, so the synthesized commands, basically, it's, if you look in the trailer, you see those little bits where like, Sonom will like, spin his spear around and then Yuffie will like jump off of it or something. Oh, those are like uh, Chrono Trigger um, tech arts? Dual techs. Dual techs. Yeah, yeah, Dual yeah, techs, they're, yeah. They're, like, they're like what's in Chrono Trigger and also like what's in the after years where you can, like, if you have the right party members together, you can do some certain combinations with it. Okay. Was yeah, there's... but no one wants to think about the after years. No one yeah, wants to think no about wants, the after years, no. that's true. I'm sorry for bringing it up. Okay. Well, that, that's something. The more Chrono Trigger ish, the better. I say. Uh, we need a we yeah, need a I frog, think, a playable frog in this I game. I think I'm really excited for that to see what combinations in the upcoming games. Yeah. So, so, let's, okay, so oh, sorry, hopefully, sorry. hopefully this is largely stuff that they're testing for uh, Seven Remake Two. Yes. Yeah, I think this is thing things that people actually kind of wanted, like. I've actually heard now that the team attacks are, are being added that there was a bit of clamoring for it. I mean, yeah. Speaking so. of testing for several remake two, isn't it kind of obvious that Sonin is just that prototype version of Sid when Sid joins? Like, well, I thought I think he that's might what be. They're trying to do. I thought he might be Zach at first, and then it turns out no, he's not. Oh, you mean in, ter in terms of how he looks? Yeah, he looks a lot like Zach. But in terms of how he plays, I think that they're, they're putting Sonan in as their way of like testing how Sid's gameplay would work. Yeah, I guess. Uh, do you think Sonan survives this like thing? Or I highly doubt it. You don't think he's going to be part of the team? 
No. I uh, highly uh, doubt it. Oh well. I he probably won't stay in the team, but after the ending of Seven Remake, I don't think this game is capable of being so cynical as to kill him off. Sorry, mm, Sonin, that's... you're non-canon. You can't be part of the band. He doesn't get to go on Sorry. the bus like that guy in the Final Fantasy XV movie. He just doesn't get to go in the car. The oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. The... In terms of the story stuff, right, and this is why I brought up the integrated name from earlier. So... I think that the Yuffie chapter is actually some kind of segue into uh, whatever they're doing in the future parts because I think that we'll find out that Yuffie is the one who saved Biggs. Oh, okay. I think, so the fact that we've seen Yuffie go through Sector 7 a little bit and uh, she's become aware of who Avalanche are and what well, even though she doesn't interact with them and the fact that like you know, the fact that they're involved there and they're involved in Midgar already, it suggests to me that she's going to be the one who saves Biggs and she's eventually going to, like, trail the party and that's how she joins them up with them later on. I should mention, uh, Sonin is part of an avalanche cell, not the one that Barrett runs. He runs it with uh, some lady with glasses who I don't think is playable. I don't know who she is. Yeah, uh, so they kind of into this. In right. Story. Yeah, they're they're interacting with the like the proper avalanche because yeah, Barrett's Barrett's group are in in the remake canon at least got people who were kicked out for being too extremist. Yeah. But, yeah. So they um they kind of hinted to this in the original seven remake. There's a scene where Big says to Cloud, he's like. Oh, I heard there are some Wu Tai operatives that are actually working with Avalanche. Do you think that's true? And Cloud's like, I don't know, I don't care. But like, oh, that's yeah, kind of like so they they hinted a little bit to this. I should also mention there's a character in Final Fantasy VII Remake who looks exactly like Yuffie and dresses like Yuffie and has the same personality. Yeah, so it's like, like weird fake Yuffie. Yeah. Seven. So now there's a real Yuffie. I if, t if they touch, the universe will explode. Mm. As we know. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we better watch out because, I mean, it looks like that DLC is taking place uh, around the uh, around the time where uh, where Cloud is uh, busy falling all that way into the church. Uh, yes. So that's yeah. uh, prime time to, uh, ha to have the two meet in the slums. Yes, there were some talks about a possible uh, 7 rem point five, which was cut from the game. And was going to be a Tifa chapter in which you see what happens to her from when Cloud fell off the fell off sector four reactor. Was it five? Right. When Cloud fell off the reactor to uh, the bit where uh, she eventually chases after Don Corneo, and you were going to see all of that. And they cut it from the game, and I'm kind of glad they cut it from the game because that does not sound interesting to me at all. But it sounds to me like they've instead reworked that bit to be adjacent to whatever's happening with Yuffie right here. I think it was the Sector 5 reactor, but I think they also renamed the reactor. Yeah, it was so Maker rem Reactor 5. It's just, I don't remember what it was called. I think they might was... have turned it into the number 2. I don't know. That, that annoys me that they changed no, it's that. Maker, it's Maker Reactor 5. But okay. it's All like, right. it's in between Sector 4 and 5, so I get them mixed up. But it's Maker Reactor 5. We have to move on to the real, the real meat of this discussion. <laughs> All right. Yeah, what the? We've we've well, been dancing good. around this. Wrist is fucking back. Yep. Oh. You never thought in the year 2021 that Weiss the Immaculate would be a thing again, but yet here we are. We live in the age of Weiss the Immaculate. It is the year of Weiss. All the kids on the street are talking about Weiss. They want to know more about this Weiss and why he is so immaculate. He's <laughs> so stupid, man. I mean. This is the only thing for okay. This is actually the second thing from the whole seven remake project that I've been upset about. Everything else I've been cool with. What else are you upset about? Oh well, I mentioned it last podcast, but I was upset that Hojo reveals that Cloud is not a soldier early on. Oh yeah, whatever. I'm, yeah, I'll dismiss. Only, I'll dismiss your concerns out of hand. That's the, the. Those are the only two things where I've ever just looked at it and been like, "This is this is just straight." Of, I, I I have no faith in them redeeming this because 
why is it stupid, man? Like, well, and, and I, did you really get to I've know Weiss? Yeah, from what little I've seen of Dirge of Cerberus, none of it just looks like anything I would be excited about them reintroducing. If they want to fix it and make it not terrible, then, I mean, props to them for, like, doing damage control, but I'm just not excited for them to do damage control for something that sucked. That's my only problem with it. To, to be fair, Dirge of Cerberus is a game that you probably could have just been able to turn your mind off and roll with how fucking stupid it was if it wasn't for the fact that the gameplay was also shit. Right. It is a hilariously bad game. It is. So, so they might have so a fix bad. for that because something else we'll get to later. But, um, yeah, anyway, I mean, we've heard <laughs> that Weiss isn't going to be, like, the main villain of of this uh of this Yuffie chapter, he's like just a VR simulation bonus boss. Yeah. Really? Um, but they, yeah, yeah. They, they did confirm that. But they run into the deep ground soldiers at the end of the demo. I thought that was like, this is it. This is what this is about. Oh. Well, maybe we'll run into one of the other idiots, like Red the Red or Blue the Blue. Or, hey, hey, hey. Um, they have proper names and you have to go and say them out completely. That is Rosso the Crimson and Azul the Cerulean. <laughs> All right? It's so stupid, man. Uh, I, it's also I don't Nero know. the I Sable. Just... Who has yeah. a jock strap on his head? Best yes. character. Yeah, yeah. I just feel sorry for when um, uh, Roberto Ferrari is, you know, basically doing the second pass on all the characters, and he has to figure out how to fix jock strap face. Um, I don't want to see his uh, horny art of Shulk the transparent. I know that's going to happen. It's going to be gross. What are they going to do about Gacked if they have to bring Gacked back? Paper what? bag. <laughs> <laughs> They this, don't. This is what I've been insisting they do if they ever bring Genesis back, and I just want him to run around with a paper bag on his head. What if they didn't bring Genesis back, though? Isn't that an option to just not do that? He is the worst character in the entire Final Fantasy VII mythos. <laughs> so yeah. So, in short, my summary of how I feel about the Yuffie chapter. Like I said the last podcast, Yuffie is actually the character I'm most excited about in 7 right now. Just because, like, I did not like her at all in the original game. I didn't dislike her, but she just never endeared herself to me at all. And now I'm just really, I'm really interested to see what they do with Wutai in general. I think there's so much potential there, and I'm really excited to see Yuffie done justice for once. So, the f I had no... Like, I was not expecting them to show new Yuffie stuff this early. So I'm super excited about that. But I am not in the least bit excited to see anything to do with Dirge of Cerberus. Uh, Skaith, I think you have some deep thoughts about, uh, you know. I'm, I'm very excited to see Dirge of Cerberus stuff, honestly. I, I, think, I think that it's finally time for all the secrets of Dirge of Cerberus to be revealed in the world. Like... Is the internet going to be a big part of Final Fantasy Remake Part 2? <laughs> the fact that the internet has been sealed off for five years or something, and then was released where, where Hojo has uploaded his consciousness into the internet. Is there going to be a scene where he's, like, plugging his brain into the internet and, like, you know... That that was the scene at the yeah. beginning of Dirge of Cerberus. It's him uploading his brain to the internet. And then, uh... Need to have the remake version. And then he radicalizes Weiss and takes over his brain, and then tries to summon Omega Weapon... And then uh, Vincent becomes Chaos Weapon, and then they go and they fight. And then Weiss has a really weird relationship with his brother, which is probably one of the top three most problematic parts of that game. Uh, most problematic I mean, top being... Top one is, is Shulk. Yes, yes, everything about Shulk. And Vincent being in love with her because she has the soul of his dead girlfriend. And, and this, is all, this is all stuff that was buried in, let's say, deep ground buried. And now it's all coming back. All of this. <laughs> exactly. It's like if uh, just... it's like if a new uh, Sonic the Hedgehog game started with Mephilus coming back. Yeah, with... exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't understand. Right, what I don't understand is who's the writer for this? Kasushi Gate Nojima, because like he's the most inconsistent writer I've ever seen. Right. On the one hand, you have like, I mean, Seven Remakes dialogue is legit brilliant. Right, I I legit think that that is some of the most well written dialogue 
we have seen in a long time. And there are some stories he's written, like I'm pretty sure he wrote Final Fantasy VI as well. There are some stories he's written that are legit brilliant. And then he writes freaking Final Fantasy X 2.5, where Tidus gets his head blown off by a blitz ball. <laughs> and this is the same person. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand how you can be that inconsistent when okay. you go from writing something legit brilliant to okay. this shit. Uh, part I, of I don't the... get it. Part of the wonderful richness that is Final Fantasy, even at its best, is how wildly the tone can contrast. That's that's in Final Fantasy VI already, where you like spend time messing around with Moogles and all kinds of weird slapstick jokes, and then all of a sudden, uh, Cyan and his family are dead. And it's like, oh wow, that that's really that's a really dark turn for this game. This doesn't seem to make much sense. So I could I could see that. It's being part of your yeah, resume. Like, carnal inconsistency is actually, like, I actually brought this point up a few days ago. Um, like, tonal inconsistency is actually one of the things I kind of like about, like, Final Fantasy VII, for instance. Like, it's a, in a lot of ways, that's a really dystopian setting, right? Like, I mean, you have, like, tons of fun jokes going on. And there's like tons of stuff that's like totally way more like humorous. But if you visit every town, it's so bleak because you talk to all the all the residents there of anything except from like Costa del Sol or Gold Saucer. You talk to all the residents there and they're like, man, Shinra just screwed us over. The, and you just see people who are like jobless, who are like have no hope and it's all bleak and everything. But at the same time, you know, you have such a lighthearted tone that it makes something like that a lot more palatable. So they can make, like, whatever, you know, the themes, like, the themes of the game are and the messages of the game. They can put stuff like that in and still have it be much more, like, consumer-friendly, right? But, uh, but like, ever since, ever since 7, whenever they revisited that world, up until 7 Remake, they decided to lean hard into the dystopian bleakness of it all and that's why you had advent children was such like was just such a depressing film has so the... I pre... sorry yeah i preferred when it was tonally kind of like inconsistent as in like it wasn't inconsistent in a completely jarring way it's just that like it it had the light-hearted undertone to make the experience a lot more enjoyable and once they got rid of that i hated it I like that they reintroduced that in Seven Remake. You know, your your thing there just made me realize that the real world has caught up to Final Fantasy VII in a lot of ways. Because now we do live in a post-apocalyptic corporate cyberpunk dystopia. And we do have Geostigma now. And I guess I guess the Dirge of Cerberus yep. fashion hasn't happened yet. But that's all coming back, baby. We've all been uploading yep. on the internet. This year, this year we were all uploaded to the internet. It's all coming true. <laughs> Hoja will take over our brains over the internet. Um, anyway, I think I think we should move on before we start writing a manifesto. Um, there okay. is yeah, I've got to drop this call in about half an hour, so we should probably get to the other two things. I, I think yeah, we'll be done. So I... I think we'll be done in fifteen minutes. Uh, we got two other Final Fantasy VII things. Well, one's not going to take much to talk about. That's Final Fantasy VII, The First Soldier. Is anyone excited for this? I was actually watching it and kind of more into it than I dare admit. Okay, okay, interesting. I'm, I'm Would you not... like to tell us what it is? Uh, Subcolor Mage, do you want to tell us what it is? Okay, well, I'm not interested in it per se, but there's something that kind of struck me about the about the trailer that they're saying it's battle royale but it didn't actually feel very battle royale like like yeah, yeah. they were fighting what clearly looked to be enemy mobs and stuff in some of those some of those scenes like i'm wondering like have they managed to like mix up like battle royales with mobas and in the process possibly created the most toxic game in the universe it is. um it is Final Fantasy VII Fortnite, I guess. Is that how we're putting it? This is this is what I it is. I have no idea. We all knew eventually this had to happen. Square Enix is nothing if not three years behind the trends, so this game had to be created, of course. 
And um, yeah, it, that's what it is. I I guess it has something to do with Zach, right? Well, is Zach yeah, in so this? Like the, there's like a uh, little... thirty years before seven, so I don't think any of the. So I don't think Zach's been born yet. Yeah, there's a little bit of a of story to it. There's like that scene where like young President Shinra is from his building is like overlooking all of Midgar. And then if you go to like the specific areas in Midgar uh, that are seen in the game, it's like early versions of stuff. So like War Market hasn't properly been built yet. Like Don Corneo's mansion isn't quite finished yet. Like basically, they're reusing a ton of assets from Seven Remake and sort of recycling them into this Battle Royale game. Do you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Metal Gear Survive. Oh, no. I This oh. looks much better than that. <laughs> that... No, that's, the, that's the thing. It reminds me of Metal Gear Survive in that it's basically just them taking assets from a, an existing game and repackaging them into something that's more of a trend-chasing game. And to be honest, like, it doesn't offend me nearly as much because this only exists as a mobile game and as far as I know, isn't trying to like charge you up the ass in the way that Metal Gear Survive was. So well, I'm a lot more forgiving of this. It, now mean, that it's a... Are, yeah. It's these game. are both explicitly listed as free-to-start games within our purchases, so they're, yeah. going to, they're going to fuck you somehow. Mm. You will lose a lot of money over this, um, assuming I you play it. That, like, I will say that probably Japan might get a lot more out of this than the West will, because like in Japan, mobile devices are huge over there. Uh, I don't. I don't really like Fortnite battle royales. I don't. I don't even think that's a real thing in Japan, is it? I don't know. I might be um, I believe that in East Asia, um, the other one is more popular. Uh, what was it called? Uh, Player Unknown. No, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, PUBG. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that I think... one. That one definitely took off more in China. I okay, don't I, know what the situation is in the rest of uh, East Asia, though. It, yeah, the way that um, Fortnite seems, that seems very, very marketed towards the West. Everything they do is very West-centric. Yeah, you know, so Hatsune Miku think... has not had a concert in Fortnite. Yeah, but, I think... But the Emperor think... from, from Star Wars has. Oh, oh. <laughs> yes, of that course. That was so stupid, man. That was so like. Anyway, before I before I run, we about we Fortnite, can't we I cannot think... go down that we cannot go down that alley. All right. If we <laughs> want to talk about how bad Fortnite is, we need another hour or so. Let's yeah. let's yes. just we so, no we can't do Star Wars. We can't do Fortnite. All right. We have to we have to focus on Seven Final Fantasy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this, on to the next one. Nothing more to say about that, Yeah, yeah. I mean, this game is like kind of. It's not that. But I mean, we'll see. I'm I'm re retaining an open mind to the first soldier, but my instinct is to be like, this is probably not something I'm going to be interested in. Who is the first soldier? I I assumed it was going to be Zach. I don't know why. I, oh, even know, I know actually, that he's not the first soldier. He, there's Angel and actually, Sephiroth before him. So yeah. I, I just remembered. I just remembered. So remember how, like, King what, was it Kingdom Hearts Union Cross? I don't know, but like the one that's like supposed to be this massive like old prequel where it's like this is what the Keyblade War was. Yes. Is this kind yeah, of the yeah. same thing where they're just doing this massive prequel and this is this is what the first soldiers were, and the prequel is to. De is this basically just? I, 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 of that? I don't know how canon any of this is actually going to end up being. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really know how uh, how much anything from the first soldier would actually integrate into the into the story of the rest of uh, of the seven series. Whereas, uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts uh, Key, also known as Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, also known as Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Also known as Kingdom Hearts Dark Road, uh, <laughs> has done some things that are actually very critical to the overlying plot, because yeah. that's just how No More are fucking rolls. Okay, so uh, it won't. So it won't be critical to the plot of Final Fantasy VII. It will just be probably another. Probably not. It will just be another background lore thing. It depends how successful it is. 
If this is wildly that's successful, that's this is going to be extremely important. If it's not successful at all, it's going to be like that Final Fantasy XV city builder game. Yeah. Or Jericho Star versus multiplayer game. Yeah. Well, that was that. I can't. I can't get down this hole. We can't go down this hole. Um, all right. Yeah. So now the next the game. Next game. The next I'm game. I'm actually really excited for the next game. Final Fantasy. For all right, let's. We have to go through the whole lineage here. So there was Advent Children, and there was Before Crisis, and there was Crisis Core, and there was Dirge Cerberus. Now you might be noticing. AC, BC, CC, DC, when's EC gonna happen? And now, mm. it's finally here. Final Fantasy VII Ever Weiss. I mean, Ever Crisis. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was reading the wrong list of notes. <laughs> Intro? I did I did an anchor man just reading it out without bothering. Final Fantasy 7 like, Ever Crisis, the replacement to Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, I guess, in structure and form. It is going to be Final Fantasy 7 remade in graphics that look more similar to the PS1 version. So, it is in yeah. effect the real Final Fantasy 7 remake. But also, it's not just going to be a remake of 7. It is also going to be a remake of Advent Children before Crisis, Crisis Core, and Dirge of Cerberus. Yeah, so so just, um, there's a giant asterisk that we need to attach to this whole thing. So, um, first of all, it has a new translation, which I'm really excited about. Um, it's base. it seems to be like they're using the word-for-word -word original script in, J in Japanese, but they're giving it a proper English translation now. I'm super excited for that. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, the second thing is, as far as the gameplay goes, it's true that like um, it does resemble the original Seven in that like there are like chibi forms on the world map or on the field map, and then when you get in battle, suddenly it's like much, much clearer like battle models and everything. And it's true that it resembles the game in that way, and it's also a command-based system, but here's where there seem to be differences because from what I've seen of that of the little snippets they've shown us that does not look like the same combat system that we saw in the original game and oh, I the battles the battle in the trailer looked like 30 yeah yeah like the battle in the trailer like um we can't we can't really read too much into that but my interpretation of this is that they're remaking the scenes from the game and they're remaking the different moments in the story but the actual gameplay in between those scenes so like the world map the material system etc those be that this is just a way to recap the stories of each of the games oh okay. well each of the five things they're covering were completely different had completely different gameplay one of them was a right. movie uh, right. So yeah, and the worst the, gameplay of them all. It, it had the most difficult gameplay. Let's be honest. And yeah, I mean that's. I'm gonna bet that uh, this is either that there are either two ways this is going to be paid for. Either you have to pay for each new episode in turn because I said it's gonna be episodic, or because we saw Aerith in that battle against the God Scorpion. There is a high risk that this is going to be gotcha shit. Okay. Mm, I don't know about that because the because Aerith being in that battle implies to me that it's just a reference to the original Final Fantasy VII demo, in which you can bring Aerith or Tifa into that battle. Oh, is that what that's supposed to be? Yeah, I was wondering so what the, the heck was going on. I thought it was going friggin' crazy. Yeah. yeah, in the original demo of Final Fantasy VII, you had the scored uh, the Scorpion boss fight but there was either tifa there or there was eris in there depending on which version of the demo you had so i'm pretty sure this is just a reference to that and also the fact that you can summon ifrit in it and i'm pr like and i think you can summon leviathan in it that's also a reference to the same demo okay uh, okay sure but i'm just saying i don't really have a lot of trust in square enix's mobile department because you know oh, this don't is, get me wrong this don't is get me the wrong. I'm not this ruling This is the out. company that has brought us uh, Brave XVS and Union Cross and, uh, God, what? Record All the bravest. These are some All of the, the bravest. These are some <laughs> of the worst fucking gotchas in existence 
only slightly yeah. above Fire Emblem Heroes, which I'm pretty sure is the worst gacha of all time. Uh, yes. But yeah, Square don't Enix loves me. shitty gachas. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not completely ruling that out. I just think, like, my interpretation of this is that it's going to be more like the 15 mobile game. The 15, uh, what was it called? Pocket Edition. Um, yeah, Pocket that, was, edition. that was adorable. I, my interpretation of this is it's going to be more like 15 Pocket Edition. I did not, but I, I, if it were free, I would have played it probably on Switch or something. I, 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 there, I, was that one, uh, there was that one episode of FF Boogie Plays uh, 15 where I did Pocket Edition up to the paywall. Huh. Uh, and it was decent enough. Like, oh. I liked it better than the regular 15, what I saw of it. Yeah, speaking yeah, of... Yeah, that's a fair conclusion. Yeah, speaking of Nintendo Switch, this game is 100% coming to Switch down the line. Like, I refuse to believe this is staying on mobile for its whole life cycle. It depends how successful it is, I guess. I mean, Union Cross never that's came true. to Switch. Yeah, that's Nintendo true. That game is awful, but... so... Yeah. Why that didn't come to Switch. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they either... If they bring this to Switch eventually and other consoles down the line, and I also wouldn't be surprised if they kind of like uh, take because they're already like reusing a lot of assets from Seven Remake here, but still creating their own. I wouldn't be surprised if they just eventually somewhere down the line just be like, "Hang on, why don't we just use this and make an actual like a uh, PS One Final Fantasy Seven actual remake of that, like just like if, with the classic kind of gameplay." It wouldn't surprise me if they did that, considering they have everything set up for it already. I'm... I just... shit. I had something I wanted to say and then completely forgot what it was. What the hell was I thinking? Alright, someone else say something. Or nobody they're say remaking. anything. They're, 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 I mean, remake, they're remaking Dirge of Cerberus. Yes! Oh, oh, that was it. Um, this is the first time that before Crisis content has been available in the West yes. in any kind of way. Yes, yes, I'm super excited for that. Like the parts, of, uh, the thing is, like, um, it's not even just that, but like, um, they've never ported Dirge of Cerberus since that. And even when, even though Crisis Core was <laughs> out, on, yeah. <laughs> even though Crisis Core was out on PSP, it never came to digital. So if you had a PS Vita, you couldn't play it. And if you didn't have the original UMD disc, you couldn't play it. So basically. Like, it's not only bringing Before Crisis to us for the first time, but for most people, the only way to play these games is through emulators, and that's not really feasible for everyone. So, I, I mean, at least in Crisis Core and Dirge of Cerberus, those uh, uh, lack of subsequent releases is understandable uh, yeah. because they would have had to edit the paper bag over Genesis' head. Yeah. Yep. Crisis Core deserves a proper playable version enough people like that game and do you know what to be honest you should remake dirt of cerberus give me an hd remaster it's <laughs> what the people want they've been clamoring for it it would be hilarious yeah make it a I two disc special with shadow the hedgehog it's gonna be perfect perfect yes, <laughs> yes. i think they're doing this absence, i think they are doing this in absence of a full remake of either of those games in the short term and i think Basically, the reason why they want to be able to keep everyone up to speed with all the compilation stuff is because it might tie into future Seven Remake parts a little more. They might like, um, they might like go back to that lore a little bit, and if they like reintroduce like Cisne or someone, then you'll actually know who Cisne is. Also, just in general, giving a uh, Crisis and Dirge. Uh, tearing out the gameplay they had and replacing it with uh, with 13's battle system, that's a grand improvement. I know mm. some people don't like uh, don't like uh, some aspects of uh, of 13's gameplay, but hello, yeah. You know, there's also like I didn't see any AI any AI auto button there, so that gets rid of most of the complaints people had about 13 in the first place. 13's gameplay. Um, I, I I've think, not seen enough think, gameplay to be sure it's going to be like 13. What's up, Techno? Yeah, I agree with that. I was about to say that. I think I haven't seen enough to uh, determine either way, but 
I agree that like that um, an improved version of 13's battle system wouldn't be the end of the world. In fact, it would be pretty cool because, like from what I've heard, that was a very good battle system. I didn't play it though. Like at the very least, it had 13's ATB bar, which is you know pretty much the direct predecessor of Seven Remix ATB mm. bar. So, um, I just I just have not played enough of 13 to say whether I like that system or not. I just know I've heard lots of people who swear by it as the best combat system they've ever done and lots of people who just despise it i mean techno you still haven't played final fantasy 13 i played it but it was so long ago that i don't remember it okay um i i don't want to tell you to play final fantasy 13 but i'm kind of curious what would happen if you played it i don't know uh, well i might do one of these things. yeah anyway so, so uh, i guess I'll we should on... yeah I, yes. are you ready to sum the show up yeah, so I'll give uh, my summary on all of this. The things I'm most excited for, I am by far the most excited uh, for Ever Crisis as a concept, just because I think the ways they could take this as a mobile game. That um, and I can't believe I'm I can't believe I'm excited for a mobile game. Basically, like I'm just I just really want to see what they do with this, how it ends up looking, and just. You know, I really want to see Final Fantasy VII, the original game, with, you know, an updated translation and stuff like that. I'm really excited to see that. I'm really excited to see Before Crisis. Second thing I'm most excited for, Yuffie chapter. Like I said last time, um, Yuffie is the character I'm by far the most interested in, seeing what they do with her, just because of how important they made Wutai stuff. So, I'm just, I really think there is a lot of potential there. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what they do with it. The third thing and the final thing I'm most excited for is um, of all the upgrades coming from Integrate, the one that I'm most interested in is Photo Mode. I think people are going to do so many things with that. I think like um, being able to reshape the camera in a ton of different ways and add a ton of different filters to it. And given how good the game already looks, like and how good the stills already are and that's before they added photo mode i think people are going to come up with some really ex really cool stuff after that now as far as the things i'm not excited for there's nothing that like aside from weiss weiss is a little upsetting like there's nothing that really upsets me it's just like i have no like the first soldier doesn't strike me as something i'll be interested in there's and, plenty, uh, if you are upset by Weiss, there's plenty to be upset by him, <laughs> least of all his hair. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just the other stuff, they're basically the first soldier and anything to do with Weiss is just kind of the stuff that, like, I'm like, yeah, whatever about. But I'm willing to forgive this game, uh, given that the other improvements look super interesting to me, and I'm really excited to see what they do next. That's my little summary of it. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have uh, long extended thoughts? I mean, very excited I actually. For all of their stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. I mean, just specifically, I actually am kind of excited for Weiss because, as I, as I posted on the FFWP Twitter, uh, Dirge Cerberus is basically the peak of bad no more design. Like, there's some, there's some terrible ones in Final Fantasy X 2 there's some terrible ones in Kingdom Hearts 2 but none of them really compare to Dirge Cerberus so whatever whatever he ends up looking like quite possibly might be the most horrific thing that we have ever seen in this series and I am all there for that kind of shit okay I guess I will sing us out uh, there is a long Final Fantasy future ahead of us. There is a long Final Fantasy past, and the past is now the future. And the future is now the past, as nostalgia continues to swirl in an endless gyre of references and embarrassing callbacks. Uh, but at the very the least... You changed the past. Exactly. <laughs> but at the very least, it is a very positive time to be a Final Fantasy fan, and the hair is as spiky as it ever was. I mean, just, I just, I just look at Weiss's hair. It's just, it's just incomprehensible. The, the geometry is madness to me. Uh, so anyway, we will be back uh, next time that there's big Final Fantasy VII news and all that sort of stuff. Uh, thank you all for listening for this hour. 
Uh, it was a real pleasure having you here, talking with you, jamming with you. We will miss you, and hopefully you yeah. will miss us. So that is yeah, it. We're thanks. the Final Fantasy Wiki, now and forever. We love you. Goodbye.